Okay, so my neighbor Joe and I um, have a steak contest coming up here uh, in a couple weeks. So we decided we we're going to do a little bit of practicing uh, this past Friday night. Um, got five ribeyes. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I picked them out, what I was looking for, all that good stuff. Um, we sampled a little bit of bourbon. Um, we had a great time. We were over at his place. You're going to see a couple different types of steaks that we did. Um, once we got our, our, our grill set correctly, they were kind of on a slope and then we ended up getting them leveled out so we could get our kind of fat in our pan working out but you'll see all of that here coming up in the next oh eight or nine minutes and um, hopefully you learn a little something but if anything just enjoy the video on on how we practiced for steaks we did a couple different methods and a couple different seasonings and we thought that they uh, worked out good so here we go let's get into it a couple tips as you're looking at meat at the grocery store or at costco or at sam's or wherever you're at we have some ribeyes here um, we're going to be doing some steak testing tonight so we'll look at these look at here so right in here these little white striations that are in here that is your marbling inside your steaks the more of that these little ones these little flecks that you see throughout the more of that that is in your meat the better cut that is so these are choice um, but they're on the good end of choice in fact all of these are really on the good end of choice. I don't know if the if this is coming out really great on this video, but it's got a, there, there is quite a bit of marbling in these. Far from prime, really we're, we're not prime, um, but uh, these, are, these are really good, especially for, for grocery stores. So um, I'm really happy with the steaks. I think they're gonna have a lot of flavor. That, I mean, that's really where your flavor comes from, um, is from that fat. Not necessarily this fat, right? So not this that's around here. In fact, we're gonna trim most of that off here in just a minute, but, um, but, the, but the marbling in the middle. And then the other thing really that you wanna look for in ribeyes, quite honestly, is this cap, this right up over here, because this, this is delicious. And it is possible to get ribeyes that don't have much of a cap at all. In fact, this one isn't great here, but it's all right. In some, in some cases, maybe it doesn't have any at all. Um, and, and you definitely want to have that on there because there's so much great flavor in there. And the difference between a ribeye that um, I want to make it uniform. I want to cut the, um, you know, the the silver skin and that hard fat off from from around the edges, right? So um, you know that, that you're just gonna it's just gonna cook out or it's going to burn or it's not going to add any flavor like the marbling does in the middle and even that fat that goes through the middle of the ribeye is going to um, add some flavor as it renders out but this here on the edge doesn't do anybody any good ever so um, i'm going to trim all that edge fat off and trim that silver skin off you'll see as i go around here i'm going to do that i'm really going to try to create a a good shape and a good size to the ribeye and um, that's important in competition not necessarily as important when you're cooking for um, cooking at home unless you know you want to impress your friends and family with really uniform looking steaks so as you see here I work just I just work around the edge um, I want to make sure that I get it off any weird irregularities and get that edge silver skin fat and um, silver skin and fat off off of it um, and then later on you'll see how we tie it together so uh, just kind of work through here and work all the way around the outside of the steak you can see how we get it all trimmed up. So as I finished up that last trimming there, uh, you can see I've now got them all trimmed. And what you see here is some of those trimmings, some of that meat that I've trimmed off, I've now shaved uh, pretty thin and I put on my Himalayan salt block. And I'm gonna flip it over a couple times. This is just kind of a snack that I treat myself with as I, as I prepare the steaks and get them all tied and seasoned. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and work the, uh, work the meat like this over the salt block for about five minutes or so. And once it's a little bit cured, then I just enjoy it as kind of my own little steak tartare. Now you'll see me, uh, I've got some of these tied. I've got, looks like three of them tied and now um, tying up this, this larger one here 
um, trimmed a little bit differently. So it's pretty easy. The reason we tie these things is to keep that, um, that cap on because there is a tendency for it sometimes to come off um, when you're cooking in high heat or separate just a little bit. And if you tie it, um, it will definitely help you uh, keep all that cap together and keep the meat together as you're, as you're cooking as a temp. Um, with the tying though, they can fold up. So you'll see later on, the pot apply a little pressure and weight to these as we cook them um, to keep them flat. So then the next thing that we do is we roll that right into tenderizing. I do not like to use the big tenderizer. I use this smaller one. This is an onion cutter, quite honestly. Some people use forks. The tines of forks will work fine. Um, but this will help get your steak just a little bit more tender um, after you cook it and a little bit easier to cut through. So um, it's an important step, I think, um, especially on a ribeye. Um, it makes it really nice and tender. You could use a bigger one like this, but um, I think that's just too aggressive. The smaller onion cutter works great. All right, so we are ready to go onto the grill. You see I've got a, a cast iron skillet here. It's got some uh, yellow onions, some garlic, and then that is duck fat um, that is starting to render out and get ready for and get hot. Um, as we roll in here, we're gonna season these steaks um, using my Big Papa Smokers blend, which I'll put in the um, I'll put in the description here so you can see what I use for my blend for the steak seasoning. So we're seasoning the um, just quick seasoning. I've already done salt. I did this salt. I, I put some salt on it after I trimmed them. Um, but here we've got the the blend going on, and then I add some hardcore carnivore amplify. You see me adding that right here, um, and then you see another little red lid, um, that small piece. That's called happy ending. We're gonna put that on at the very very end. Um, so as I flip this these over. Um, Gonna go back, add more blend. Really liberal on this steak. Steak really likes a lot of salt, likes a lot of pepper, black pepper. That's heavy on on this blend. Um, so you can see me deciding to do a third steak here. Um, so we're gonna now add some seasoning to this third steak. We're gonna add some Amplify to it, um, Hardcore Carnivore Amplify to all of it. And I'll flip it and add one more. And then the last two steaks, we've got another blend that we're gonna try. It's a blend from a friend of ours. Um, that's really, really salt forward. And then it's got some um, really great larger milled pepper. So you can see as I put this one on, um, more white flakes. Look how you see a lot more white flakes. So large coarse pepper going on there. I mean, salt going on there. And I love that. I'm from a friend of ours, so I'll put that in the description too kind of what, what's in there. It's a Dalmatian blend, salt, pepper, garlic, really. Um, and just maybe a little bit of uh, turbinado sugar in there to, to give it some sweetness. But when Joe and I practice steaks, we like to sample a little bit of bourbon. Here we've got Jefferson's Reserve Twin Oaks Custom Barrel. And here's just a little picture of the sample of our bourbon that we're drinking while we cook our steaks. Okay, we're gonna go 30 and 30 on this one. We realized when we flipped this one that we had the um, we had the grills on a slope and so the duck fat was rolling down on one side and um, we got it really hot on one end. So we fixed that in the next four steaks that we did after this one, but you can see the, the miscoloration on that one um, after we turned it. Then you see here that I let it go 30 seconds and then I just rotated it a quarter of a turn. Um, and you can see that happen right here. And then I put the pan back on top to keep it pressed for another 30 seconds um, to make those grill marks. And you'll see those here in a second. That was my steak dance. We got one, we're about ready. So you can see here, this is a different steak. This one, the color is a lot better. The grill marks came out okay. Um, but we're gonna go back here and, and um, that's the one, that's the second steak we did. A lot better color, good looking steak. And then this one that we're gonna slice open next was the first one that um, we had the, the grill set at a slope. Um, so the fat was all down on that one end. You can see that on the left side there, a little bit darker. But um, we definitely achieved what we wanted on this one. Um, we got, for competition, we want medium. We got medium in the center um, and then we're a little overdone there on the left side. And then you can see as we finish things off, we were sampling the uh, Maker's Mark cask strength 
bourbon. Um, good stuff there. And finally, we'll finish off here with a shot of the, uh, of the total carnage of the five ribeyes that we tested. Um, we were able to polish off, with a little help from our wives, um, all of them. And, um, and we finished our bourbon here. But uh, that's what it looked like after our testing. So I appreciate you joining us. And we'll definitely have more videos and one from our competition coming up here really soon.